Doctor Who, The Mondrax Revolution, written and read by Isaac Travers. The wise doctor looked like a man in his late thirties with no hair and piercing green eyes. He wore a red suit with an orange tie which made him stand out in the room. He had just returned to Gallifrey and pleaded to the Time Lords to resurrect his companion, Eleonora, who was killed during one of his previous adventures. He pleaded to the Time Lord saying, You can't let her just die! Is there anything you can do to save her? The Time Lords disagreed. We will not risk our great powers to revive your friend from the dead. What was done is done. At this time, you can't change it. The doctor was furious that his people would not help him, and he was taken away back to his TARDIS by two guards. The TARDIS made an immediate departure from the planet and into the time vortex. While sitting on his chair and thinking sadly, he then got a message from his old enemy, the Master. The doctor got close to the console of his ship and spoke to his old friend on the scanner. All right, what is it now? He said, feeling a little annoyed that he had dealt with him so many times it stopped being fun for him. Well, Doctor, it is truly great to hear from you again, said the Master, who had dark grey hair and a goatee like many of his previous incarnations before him. He wore a black cape with a suit and aqua tie. Underneath the cape, he had red marks on his right hand, as he was slowly dying from a disease that the Rani gave him during the final Ultimate Time War. The Doctor did not have time to deal with the Master. Why have you contacted me? You know this is a bad time for me, said the Doctor. I know that you've been having a bit of a midlife crisis, but I'm not here to destroy you, but instead to help you. The Master then paused to remember what he needed to say. You see, Doctor, many Time Lord archaeologists study different planets, but there is one planet that has too much history. Once they go there, they never come back alive. Do you mean Levi 46? Asked the Doctor, who had already known a large amount of history about the planet. Yes, Doctor, said the Master. Anyway, will you help me? The Doctor felt puzzled about trusting his oldest enemy, as he has faced him so many times it started getting a little repetitive. The Doctor then replied, Under one condition, if I help you, then you can't turn against me. The Doctor turned off the TARDIS scanner and reached to one of the controls on the console. The TARDIS time rotor was moving up and down as it was preparing to land on the planet Levi 46. The TARDIS arrived on Levi 46. It was a dry, desert world with dead trees, corpses and fossils of every species on that planet just lying about on the ground. The Doctor couldn't believe what he saw. As he looked around this desolate wasteland. Suddenly, the Master's TARDIS arrived. It had taken the form of an old wardrobe from the tw early 20th century. The wardrobe opened, and the Master walked out. Well, my dear Doctor, I see you now on this planet of the dead, said the Master. I wouldn't say it's entirely dead, replied the Doctor. While the Doctor and the Master were talking to each other, a creature hiding in the bushes, was watching them. It was a Mondrax warrior, which was the native species of Levi 46. The Mondrax was a strong creature that had an exoskeleton around its body that was like armor. It started making a creaking hissing noise as it was preparing to aim for the kill. The doctor started hearing the noise and alerted the master that something was close by. We must be careful, said the doctor. The creature then grabbed its blaster and fired at the ground. The doctor noticed the blast and both he and the master started running away while the Mondrax pursued them. As the doctor and the master were running, more and more Mondrax warriors appeared from the bushes. Then the doctor stepped into a net and both he and the master were caught. The Mondrax warriors surrounded the doctor and the master, holding spears and preparing to attack them. The Doctor told the Mondrax warriors that they could help them, as the Doctor was trying to find a cure for the Master's disease. The Mondrax warriors agreed to the Doctor's demand and released them both. 
The Mondrax warriors needed the Doctor's help to destroy the Mondrax elders that resided in the great caves within the planet. The warriors were planning to overthrow their masters and take their rightful place to their world. The Mondrax warriors helped the Doctor and the Master prepare everything they needed for when they were to head off to the Great Cave. One Mondrax didn't think that they could trust the Doctor and the Master because they were completely different from them. One Mondrax even served a few drinks for the Doctor and the Master. One of them contained Mondrax poison. The Master gave a wink to the Mondrax serving the drinks as he knew what was about to happen to the Doctor. The next morning, the Doctor and the Master made their way to the Great Cave where the Elders reside. Deep within the wisest of all the Mondrax Elders sat a grail that held great power to those who wield it. The Doctor started strategizing the plan to get inside. After they started strategizing the plan, the Doctor started to feel a bit weak but he hid it from everyone so no one would notice. First, the Mondrax warriors broke into the cave and ordered the elders to give them full control of the planet, or else the elders would be killed. The doctor ordered the warriors that they will not murder anyone in cold blood, but then he was tossed aside. The Mondrax warriors then killed the elders and had full control of the planet. The doctor then yelled out to the master, please help me, I don't feel good. The master gave out a chuckle. Oh my dear doctor, you have fallen right into my trap. You see, I was planning to have the Mondrax take over this world and make it their home. In exchange, they would help me find a cure for my disease. And that also means you would have to be left here to die. Slowly but surely, the Mondrax poison started to take over the doctor's body. His face was sweating constantly and his vision was blurring constantly. The master then pulled out a blaster from his cape and aimed it at the doctor. Now, this is what you did to me many years ago. It's time for you to say goodbye. The master fired the blaster at the doctor, but instead of hitting the doctor, the blaster fired back, hitting him. Soon after, the master's hand started to glow. Damn it, said the master. You may have stopped me here but we will both die together. I'll see you soon, Doctor. And next time, it just might be your last. The Master grabbed his teleport device, which sent him back to his TARDIS. The Master then gave a maniacal laugh as regeneration energy started to burst out of his body as his TARDIS started to take off to leave the planet. Meanwhile, back on Levi 46, the Doctor started making his way to his TARDIS. He was starting to feel weaker and weaker as he had dissected the Mondrax poison. The poison was affecting every bit of his body. Luckily, the doctor got into the TARDIS in time. Once inside, he made his way to the console. He flicked every switch he needed to to get off the planet of Levice 46. The doctor felt like he couldn't breathe, so he took off his tie so he could get some air. He felt he was suffering from a heat stroke. Once the doctor pulled down the lever to take off, he fell to the ground. He had become weaker than ever, and he knew that his time was up. Suddenly, the doctor's hand was glowing. This meant only one thing. He was about to regenerate. Oh dear, not again. I've got too much to do, said the doctor, as he wanted to do so much more, but knew that time was running out for him. But at least it was fun while it lasted. It may be the end for me, but I welcome my new life. The doctor then regenerated. A massing, glowing light surrounded the room as the doctor's face changed into a much younger man with brown hair and blue eyes. The doctor then woke up, still lying on the ground, from his regeneration, saying, Well, that was interesting. <laughs>